Greetings. This is a talk about my microtonal serialism. This is a chaotic idea. I'm going to run through it and get to the chase. We don't have time to dilly dally. This is avant garde music. This is taking pitch serialism a la Arnold Schoenberg to the microtonal potent potential frequencies, potencies. So here's a few steps and tips on what I've discovered about this fascinating realm of polyphony. Polyphony dates from 1000 AD. In our time, in our civilization, I'm sure that polyphony existed many aeons ago before the European civilization began as we know it but we trace it back to the medieval times when chanting was just one monophotic line ha la 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 and then they added a second harmony upon it so now they had chords and the beginning of chords is what makes Western classical music so great. You can see that there's a great difference between African tribal music and Western classical music because of the presence of harmony, which is polyphony, which is not rhythm, but actually chords. So... When you listen to Messian or Carl Ruggles or other music, Messian's not necessarily serialism, like Arnold Schoenberg is a, is a genuinely great example of serialism. But I would say the top three pieces in my mind currently, after creating Tempermancy 3, and I'll tell you what it is in just a second, it's pretty simple really. But there's a lot of complicated things in between the simple aspects. So, Messian's chronochromy is very similar because it shows that various voices can be layered upon each other that are seemingly unrelated but have a greater natural and theoretical semblance between them, creating a timeless void of sound, which is what Tempermancy 3 does for me in a microtonal context without the we'll get into what microtonal is and then Schoenberg's Moses and Darren uh, it's very blasphemous towards religion and towards the concepts of music that human thought had projected upon the absolute chaos of sound so I think that Arnold Schoenberg was going to 12-tone because of his resonance in his body that he was detecting on a more scientific level, which is what my tempermancy is. And um, I think that they were trying to find a scientific level of sound before synthesis. And I guarantee if you listen to Moses and Aaron by Arnold Schoenberg, to me, um, this is avant-garde music, but this is very futuristic even still and very unexplored. The concepts in Schoenberg's music is still very unexplored, mostly because of a subjective um, dissonance that may be unpleasant to most listeners or many listeners. The avant-garde is still kind of a smaller group of fans, as uh, Pierre Armand said in the article that we're not in an avant-garde era but anyways with that being covered I'll tell you what tempermancy is um, in a simplistic way um, it was my attempt to take something like Carl Ruggles Sun Treader or Schoenberg's Moses and Aaron as a good example there's many more and uh, Messian's Chronochromy which had a great effect upon me especially the Pierre Boulez version, um, RIP. But uh, So Tempermancy 
is a serialism of pitch across the entire microtonal range. Um, you know, maybe some of the highest pitches are excluded. You know, let's just k take the keyboard range as a good solid basis for, uh, you know, musical pitch and not go to the pitches that are still detectable. Like, like when you hear a TV in the next room, high frequencies, that's not really musical. And there's not, that point is not to be extreme as far as that goes, but the point is that musical pitch is a frequency. Musical temperament is a logarithmic value related to frequency, but more or less related to ratio based on classical learning in tuning. Now, avant-garde music was stretching the limitations of 12-tone tuning. Once again, Arnold Schoenberg, one of my favorite composers of all time. And my friend Robert Helps, the composer, was was uh, in a class with Roger Sessions and Arnold Schoenberg was on the phone with him talking to Roger Sessions while my friend Bob was sitting in the classroom. So I always felt a closeness to Arnold Schoenberg and my friend Bob obviously was very influenced by Arnold Schoenberg and also Webern and Berg, that goes without question. So I have my notes here, but... um. I may or may not need them, but uh, I'm being interfered with at all times. This microtonal stuff is pretty crazy. It seems to be interfering with the status quo of everything in human world. Um, so I took a, I made a board and I took some dice and I had six dice and I threw them upon the board and they were marked so as, and I just used a thousand equal temperament. Um, my calculations may have been arithmetic and not logarithmic, which I was recently informed about. And um, don't blame me. I've tried my best to learn all this on my own. Um, yeah, so um, what the Tempermancy 1 and 2 are available on YouTube and my website. And you can tell the differences in them. Uh, so... I don't want to lose people, but I'm just going to go into this. Um, Tempermancy 3, the scales are on there. They may be calculated arithmetically. Um, they're based on the same original board. So I did 3 with that board. Um, some bugs and stuff got in it, and I threw it out. There's a photo of it. It was a hexagon with um, about 500... Um, divisions within it and the dice were thrown upon it in a sort of divinatory way or chance operation however you like to see it that doesn't really matter the point is that I'm using a natural process to choose the frequencies or notes of the unlimited scale um, the human ear does not recognize that many intervals outside of 12 tone. Uh, yes, microtonal people may argue what I'm saying, but they're taking it the wrong way a lot of times. Um, please try to understand the meaning of what I'm saying and not just take it out of context. What I'm saying is we don't go to 100 EDO and as a scale or as a frequency range and make these qualifications. And what I've discovered is the reason I didn't get too deep into temperament and tuning in the classical sense in the traditional sense is because intervals are the same and all of the tunings and all of the temperaments are human projections upon the unlimited chaotic natural state of sound that we are that our body recognizes sound exists outside of our body in ranges we can never perceive but we have our own version of the microcosm within our mind and within our ears that the chaos of sound and then we project human theory upon it even the idea and the notion of an octave may be a human projection now that may seem a little abstract and absurd but if you begin to um, listen to my Tempermancy 3 especially because it's the most well-rounded of all the theories and on 3 I used 
quite simply, I used a DX7 keyboard, the 2D, which is microtunable, and that is all I used on it. Um, there's a couple of options for Tempermancy 4 that I have. I could use less different timbres, and I could use more of the same timbre in order to show the polyphony of microtonal serialism, as I like to call it. But serialism can be considered not only for pitch, but for tempo, timbre, rhythms, and stuff like that like in the 1950s of 20th century composition. Now, I'm not really going that far into it. I'm just looking at the more or less um, root of Arnold Schoenberg's 12-tone tonality. So I'm just saying serialism as a form of tonality or Karlheinz Stockhausen's democracy of pitch, where every pitch is given equal um, say in the matter. Um, there is no central tonality so this is more scientific i think that stockhausen was into space music as he had s spoken about quite a bit spatialization the helicopter quartet spatializing on a very kind of fantastic level but very provable level that space is relative to pitch as well like the doppler effect is a effect of the space and time in between two pitches which is basically a glissando so he knew that and um, he was very fond of Webern and very fond of J.S. Bach in his final work Art of Fugue both of those are spatial compositions or composers in Webern's uh, case so um, it's not that difficult to comprehend when you have a background in 20th century avant-garde composers and as um, a listenable, pleasurable experience, something that could take you to mystical or intellectually deeper levels, especially Stockhausen, he's great, and you could, like, you know, trip out on his music. So it's really deep. And um, I think Arnold Schoenberg would take an interest in my w using the serialism which became Stockhausen's democracy of sound or pitch especially pitch to me I'm focusing mostly on pitch in the polyphonic sense that pitch is the basis of harmony and that tuning and temperament is a part of the abstraction of harmony in the classical order um, whereas when in the 50s and 60s when they're using early synthesizers and the early tape music and computer music that it wasn't an emphasis on micro tuning it was an emphasis on creating synthesis or timbres from various waves which produce a similar effect as micro tuning and they're both interrelated the thing is on a philosophical level micro tuning in my in my sense of it is that harmony is um, in the universal structure comes before um, sound so harmony is like a mathematical abstraction and sound would be resultant of that so I think in the medieval like Hildegard von Bingen and those kind of mystical compositions that they knew that harmony was kind of like a music of the sphere so it's more abstract say than the natural phenomena of sound per se this is arguable. It's almost like a chicken and the egg argument. But um, anyways, when I was composing Tempermancy 3, I, I thought, what, what society or civilization has created music like this in the past? And I came up with this idea that it's Chaldean, that the Chaldean music theory would be the closest to what I was playing. And it, it really affects my brain brain i mean this stuff can really get to your mind if you're doing microtonal a lot because it's it's your mind is trying to create a pattern it's trying to create a recognition of the intervals like composers do with 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 music or jazz improvisers do with chords they create a pattern the brain creates a kind of recognition program for the harmonies because it's resonating in the ear and in the mind and the science of that, we don't have 100%, of course. We barely know anything about the mind. And so 
I got a electrical shock in my right hand. I was dozing into my Tempermancy 3 towards the end of it. And I was kind of dozing into it and having this mind experience, as music can do. And then all of a sudden I was jolted like I had, had you know, shook one of those uh, uh, electric shock um, hand buzzer things. And it went right through my right hand and woke me up. And I began to feel a little bit uneasy about going further. I had about the, the final product of Tempermancy 3 is 30 minutes. That's where I cut it off was when I felt the shock. I thought, well, that, I think this is enough. I don't want to damage my brain or something, overloading it with microtonal tones in the serialism context. And, you know, there's maybe 300 at once going, and they can be anywhere in the musical spectrum, not just within what's considered a tuning. So there isn't really any human structure to it. It's really what's considered like nature itself, like the phenomenal aspect of nature. So that to me is what's fascinating is that I'm getting closer to the chaos of nature and um, discovering that all of our theory and all of our intervals are related to us and to our projection upon chaos. And um, so let me look at some of these notes because that's a that's a good overview. Um, Tempermancy 4 should be available soon it's going to be part of another project from uh, Steve Kusaba uh, a great composer that's out there uh, so the earth and sun and planetary music see what did they base the solfeggios on in ancient times I've come to the conclusion that it was based by ear now maybe on some higher level it was there's some absolute frequencies that resonate the universe or something like that but for all practical purposes uh, I don't think that that is going to really be part of uh, an essential doctrine or something like that, that all tuning and, and temperaments are essentially by ear. So that's one of the fallacies of microtonality is that it's not by ear, it's by ratio strictly, and then somehow it becomes by ear by repetition. But I, like I said, that to me is trying to mimic maybe the tonal music of the 19th century and not the serialistic notion of synthesis in the Stockhausen sense or Messian, who is Stockhausen's teacher, of course. So the Chaldean music theory is my idea that the Chaldeans were a society that were even before the Egyptian pyramids, that they were like kind of this, you know, high civilization the Middle East before all the bad ones you know they were like a classical ast astronomical astrological kind of civilization but um, this is um, Tempermancy 3 is like the fulfillment of all my work towards developing a chronochrome of microtonality basically where there could be all these different things at once across the range interacting with each other and the only thing that's bridging them together is the fact that the law of the composer is that all the pitches are considered equal. So you get that horizontal effect of uh, a Schoenberg piano piece or something like that. So um, Tempermancy 4 will be perfected, in my opinion. There's a couple of discrepancies because the piano range... If you look at the frequencies as it goes higher in pitch, the frequencies are more spaced apart. So that means there could be more frequencies in the higher area than the lower. But I'll work that out because if I go beyond on both levels, I may I may uh, adjust for that, but I may not. I don't know. I'm working on the board right now. It's Everything has to be simplified for it to be usable. And that's definitely a European mindset is the simplification of everything. And that's what I agree with. So the board is even more simple than the first one. And it's basically going to provide me with scales. But these are just selections of frequency across the entire range. So it really isn't related to temperament. It's related to the ability of the frequency generator 
to give me the pitch, and then I tune the Yamaha DX7 uh, to the uh, frequency of the generated wave generated from the board, which is like mimicking chance operation, I Ching, tarot, etc. And so it's kind of has that spiritualistic basis to it, but it's not necessary that the listener is inclined into that or not. It's just like a leaf falling from a tree. It has to fall somewhere. But is there some sort of predestiny to that? That's the law of nature. It's not necessarily what we can project upon it. We are subject to that law. So um, I think Schoenberg was subconscious of some of these things, maybe not in his conscious mind, but that was what he was grappling with for some time because he's a real deep guy. And uh, so he always gave me that influence. Um, so um, the mind makes connections. Uh, it can be evidence that there are intervals that always appear no matter what across the entire microtonal serialism. So that should be fascinating to anyone. Uh, if you're in microtonality but you don't play by ear, it may not matter, but if you are a musician that plays by ear, you've never really thought of microtonality as being outside of music because all the musicians use bending and uh, even like guitar feedback or guitar slide work or anything that involves, you know, a little bit of a pitch stretch or whatever. So, I'm excited to have the Tempermancy 4 board. Um, the name Tempermancy doesn't really matter. It could be named whatever. That's just the word that stuck with me. It's kind of humorous sounding. But I'm going to call it World of Mancy. I've had that name set up for a few years already. So, I'll just stick with things and try to follow them through. Um, I've used lasers in the, the color frequencies. Um, also to learn more about sound because sound and, and light are related by several gigahertz uh, apart um, we don't know as much about light as we know about sound but uh, and cymatics helps a lot to see the abstraction of sound in a visual context and in the creative sense, um, there's I felt like there's some kind of intense ancient and naturalistic quality of this type of microtonality, similar to the feeling I got from listening to Messian, and especially Chronochromie is a great example of where microtonality meets 12-tone, which is what I thought Ruggles' Sun Treader was like, where he was probing the higher level of tonality in his dissonant overtones, carefully scientifically placed, and then my stuff, microtonal serialism, there is no tonality past it. This is taking tonality to the absolute limit because the overtones of the notes that I'm selecting, they're technically pitches, not notes. The pitches I'm selecting, um, the overtones when they are combined, it is not another tonality. It is some form of energy that the brain has to somehow qualify and make um, like recognitions for so the brain could make recognitions in my case of the advanced theory behind Sun Treader from Carl Ruggles and then find out within the brain that there was microtonality going on in the overtones that he had selected in his pitch work and then I was thinking well that dawned on me on a revelation type of way that there is a microtonal universe that he was kind of hinting at. So as far as tonality and polyphony goes, I think, and I believe that my Tempermancy 3 is the culmination of a thousand years of tonality that has basically ended because we're not going to go to another microtonal level past this. And it's bit, I'll admit it's barely listenable. I mean, nobody's going to try to listen to that in their car and relax and you know cruise down Pacific Coastal Highway you know whatever it's not like that it's it's the the science in it said that there's for the color spectrum 346,005 discernible colors 
Well, that's like saying, well, we can hear 200 EDO and discern it. Well, not technically, no. That's just saying that you notice a difference in your ear. But you're definitely not going to make um, 200 EDO uh, a theory where you're going to recognize every chord from that. That's not how music is. Music is a certain set of intervals that nature allows us to hear. It, it's just like listening to frogs at night or listening to the droplets of water in your aquarium that it crea creates a sort of musical pattern that our mind is projecting upon it. Those notes are not the same. They're just any note. It can hit any note. The frogs can hit any note. The birds can hit any note. We just have our human way of recording it in our mind like Messian recorded the birds. So, um, the, like the 432 hertz thing, that's absolutely arbitrary. 440 hertz and 432 hertz, that makes no difference where you put A. That's, that's a fallacy. That was just something that Verity was trying to kind of make his theory about. And it has some basis, but it really doesn't matter. Um, so, like the ancient Greeks, we don't know exactly what Pythagoras was doing with those intervals. We don't know exactly what initiatory sciences were behind that. There might not even be a, a tuning reason. It, it could be something completely unknowable since most of those doctrines have been lost to time you can't come out there and say that i mean you know that's that's just that's a thing in itself to use that as an argument against um pitch democracy so this isn't an argument this is an open discussion for open minds um you know maybe there's some sort of destructive aspect of of frequencies but uh, an octave is, is two times. Um, so decimals don't relate to uh, musical tuning necessarily either. Um, is there a sympathetic resonance in light photons? We don't know. Um, there's a multidimensional aspect. Um, so you say, is that possible? Is there such thing as multidimensionality? I think there is um, that something can generate its own dimensionality like within a UFO or something, but it could actually just slip through the ground like you don't see it. And within their UFO, they're creating a dimension that's stable, but outside of it, it's using some kind of resonant um, energies that actually can penetrate the three-dimensional realm. So um, the 12-tone um, resonates so well because... Um, the human energy centers are based on the number 12, like the energy chakras and things like that. But I don't get too deep into that because you see where that goes into a non-scientific or kind of belief system structure. Whereas there is classical science behind the chakras. It's just not respected as such. So um, let me see what we got here. These are just random notes. Everything that I wrote down. There's a lot more going on. But falling leaves, water droplets, natural phenomena, dodecophony of sound, democracy of pitch is what we're covering. Uh, the same tonal theory in its broad approach, microtonality was ever present. Even though they didn't use microtonality, they didn't have computer wave generators to go to that point. And they didn't need to because, like I said, even Schoenberg's music now sounds very futuristic. Like it still hasn't come to its kind of culmination of respect that it deserves that people are still subjective towards um, tonality. Um, so I don't see anything on that. Yeah, I could write a, sp a, a small treatise on this, but I think the music itself in this day and age, we don't have the things of the past. It's like things are kind of slowly fading away now. It's like we just share it on Internet, and luckily some people will get something out of it, but it's not like so concrete now. They're just looking for stuff that you can market now it's like a desperation um i think avant-garde music is always an attempt to return to nature as a philosophy in itself this is i'm not talking about futurism that's not avant-garde that's something different um you consider messiani as a naturist type of person he was an ornithologist my temperamentcy board is not a musical theory 
its attempt at gaining access to a greater realm of chaos backslash nature. So I'm not going to compensate for frequency distance at the higher pitches. So I thought that maybe I won't compensate because I'm going to have more than are, are discernible on both the low end of the keyboard spectrum and the high pitches. See, because the frequencies become more spaced apart because it's faster wavelength. I don't know. Uh, it depends. I, I still haven't finished the board yet. I'll see how many spaces I can derive from it. And then they'll be number coded. And then I'll do a frequency list on the... Uh, text file that I'll reference after I do it. So, um, nature, mathematics, nonconformity to pitch theory, spatialization, those are all very important. And it deals with avant garde, culmination of tonal theory, reaching the limitations of tonality in this context is the most important thing. So, avant garde tonality is not micro tuning. That's not avant-garde. That's an attempt to find temperament as meaningful. So people think that there's a big difference between... It, there may be in some level, but uh, like mean tone guitar, they have a new fret design, versus regular guitar, that it sounds a little better, you know, that kind of stuff. Or um, like I have an 18 guitar, which I've kind of lost interest in. Um, so... There's some level beyond microtonality. Is it, is it caused by body tonality that can cause nervous system shocks? Um, the sound entering the brain, how does it form pattern recognition in the brain if the patterns are barely discernible as far as temperament is concerned or as far as synthesis is concerned? So it's a combination of synthesis, the creation of timbre and tone, and the idea that frequency creates pitch which pitch creates tonality and temperament is the structure of tonality in a given context there's all types of temperaments out there but the fact remains that all the temperaments available are going to have to draw their temperaments from chaos and so I'm attempting to abstract temperament away from its structure as such perceived and to realize that a thousand equal temperament is no different than the entire frequency range. So why not just say, well, I'm using a thousand equal temperament minus the temperament. And I'm just using all the frequencies that more than enough cover what the human can perceive. Maybe twice as far, maybe ten times as far what the human perceives. You know. So... It's temperamency is not intended to promote illusion of scale. Um, so what's beyond microtonality? Um, it's like something subtle and unrecognizable changed in my brain when I first heard Temperamancy 3. And I basically um, was having a difficult time typing. Um, everything seemed backwards. I felt tired for a couple of days, so it definitely affected my brain in ways that are not really known. So, um, resonances of the mental and physical body, the altering of perceptions, which was one of the goals of avant-garde music. To alter perceptions onto a new level of dimensionality in space. Cosmic processes unknown of affecting the sensory perceptions on a greater level. An alien-like human advancement away from noise. This is not noise or sound composition per se, although it owes its beginnings to such. Um, like Usachevsky type stuff, I'm having a difficult time, or Pierre Schaefer. I could barely type after hearing Tempermancy 3. I cannot feel so quick to type. It was it was weird. It was like my brain was dealing with the sounds that had just entered it. And the nervous system, I think, somehow creates tonal memory. And it provided my hand with a shock um, sensation as if it was real. So um, I'll just call it serial infinite tone equal temperament it's cheesy but that's basically what all it really is um, there's not like a temperament so it's like just everything so that's what 
gives it structure is the the board is what chooses the scales and I'm gonna do a video of the temperament C4 drawing so yeah it's kind of like a lottery but when you have divination it's supposedly more like set up in a ritualistic way so it has a different level of meaning to it but that's not part of the debate that's not necessarily the issue at hand the issue is getting this theory to people so they can perceive it for the avant-garde especially which is like my lineage is in that Schoenberg Stockhouse and even WC there was a book called uh, Concise History of Avant-Garde Music from WC to Boulez by Paul Griffiths that was a book I read in like 11th grade that really turned me on I was really excited so and so I'm thinking this tonality idea is an illusion as well that we're just playing with chaos and trying to make sense of the universe So this is a dialectic, so feel free to dialectically contribute on the comments. I'll be waiting. Um, I've gotten some good comments that help clear up some issues for me. Um, just keep an open mind, and nobody's necessarily right or wrong. It's just you just question until you come to a logical proof and uh, a comfortable level of knowledge. So thanks for tuning in.